Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 19-2, part B. We're going to finish up section one of chapter six. So this is part two of that section. <clears throat> In the previous video, we defined a random variables. Then we talked about discrete and continuous random variables and gave some examples. In this video, we're going to discuss probability distri distributions specifically discrete probability distributions, learn um, <clears throat> their properties, how to find the mean, and their standard deviation. <clears throat> so let's define a probability distribution. <clears throat> it assigns a probability to the sample space of a statistical process or activity in such a way that three things are true. <clears throat> the first is that all the probabilities are greater than or equal to zero. <clears throat> Two, the total probability of the sample space, the probability of S, <clears throat> is 1. So all the probabilities have to add up to 1. And then the third property, which we never test, but which is true, is that the probability of the union of disjoint events <clears throat> is the sum of their individual probabilities. And we've already learned this with the addition rule. So this definition, we can use it to show that all probabilities are between 0 and 1 inclusive. Now, I've already told you this, but it could actually be proved, okay? And we're not going to do that because this is an introductory class. <clears throat> so let's talk about a discrete probability distribution. It assigns a probability to every possible outcome in S. <clears throat> you say, well, what about a continuous one? Well, we're going to see that that's a little bit different, but <clears throat> the same kind of overall principle applies. So to test whether or not a group of probabilities is a probability distribution or not, we check the first two properties. So <clears throat> we check that all the probabilities are between 0 and 1 for all values of x, and then we add up all the probabilities of x, and they have to equal to 1. So another way we could write this using our summation notation is the sum of <clears throat> the probabilities of x are equal to 1. Okay? <clears throat> so a continuous probability distribution, it assigns a probability to every range or interval of values of x. <clears throat> We're going to discuss this in chapter 7, so just know that it's different because um, the probabilities for any individual value there will be zero um, because there's an infinite number of them, and we'll explain that more in chapter 7. So for right now, just um, here's the definition, and instead of every value, it's about ranges or, or <clears throat> intervals of values of x. Okay. So let's do an example of a discrete probability distribution. Let x equal the number of plants that will survive a frost out of five total. And so we ask, <clears throat> is the following a probability distribution? So we have 0 through 5. And so that makes sense that we could have 0 plants survive the frost, all of them could die. <clears throat> or just 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 of them could uh, survive, all 5 of them. <clears throat> and so we have these probabilities. Now, all of the probabilities are between 0 and 1, so that's good <clears throat> because that's what's required for a probability. It has to be between 0 and 1. There are no negative values. There's no values above 1. And now we add up the total, and we find when we put this into our calculator that we get exactly 1.000. So, <clears throat> yes. It is a probability distribution. <clears throat> okay, well, let's look at another one. Is the following a probability distribution? If it's not, then we need to tell all the reasons why it's not. Okay, so let's look at value number two. Oops. <clears throat> so as soon as we find one, we know that the answer is no. And because <clears throat> we have, the first one is we have a value uh, greater than 1. <clears throat> then we look at the next one. This is negative. That can't be. So 2, we have <clears throat> a value less than 0. Now, the, the fourth one, the value that goes with x equals 4 is fine. 
This one's okay, but it doesn't matter. If we have one of these that aren't between 0 and 1, then it's not a probability distribution. However, the total adds up to 1, but it doesn't matter. <clears throat> so these are the only two reasons here that we uh, say that this is not a probability distribution. We have a supposed probability that's greater than 1, which can't be, and another that's less than 0 or negative, and that cannot be. Okay. So let's take a look at um, the first probability distribution. I'm going to rewrite it. x, <clears throat> p of x. And here we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <clears throat> and 0 0.168, 0 0.360, 0 0.309. 0 0.132, 0 0.028, and 0.003. And we have a total that's 1. Now, the mean of a probability distribution is given by the sum of, <clears throat> I don't like my sum sign there, the sum of x times p of x <clears throat> across all the values of x. So <clears throat> I need this quantity, and I need to add it together. So I'm going to make another row in the table, x times p of x. And this is one of the easiest ways to do it. So I take 0 times 0 0.168, and I get 0. <clears throat> I take 1 times 0 0.360, I get 0 0.360. 2 times 0 0.309, 0 0.618. 3 times 132, I get... 396, 0 0.396. <clears throat> Four times 0 0.028 is going to give me 0 0.1. Let's see, 8. So that's 3 times 4 is 12. <clears throat> and then 5 times 0 0.003 is 0 0.015. Now I need to add these together. <clears throat> so I'm going to make sure that I did the 4 times uh, 0 0.028 correctly. Yes. And so we add these up. So I start with 0 and then plus 0 0.360 plus 0 0.618 plus 0.396 plus 0 0.112 plus 0 0.015. <clears throat> and I get 1.501. <clears throat> now, remember that this is called the expected, this is the mean, but it's also the expected value. of x, <clears throat> okay? So an expected value means the value that you expect to get, and this is saying that you get expect to get a value somewhere between 1 and 2. And if we look, the highest probabilities that occur here are between 1 and 2, or at 1 and at 2. So it makes sense that our expected value or our mean is going to be somewhere between these two numbers. So mu is equal to 1.501. <clears throat> now, how do we get the variance? The variance is sigma squared, and that is equal to the sum of <clears throat> x minus mu squared times p of x. But this is a messy thing that we don't really want to do. <clears throat> and so it turns out that we can get this by um, saying the sum with algebra, the sum of x squared p of x minus mu squared. <clears throat> so this will give us our variance. Okay, so we have mu squared. We have mu, mu squared, so we don't need that. What we do need is x squared times p of x. <clears throat> so I'm going to make another row, x squared p of x. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply two columns we already have. I'm going to multiply this column, or this row, with this row. <clears throat> so I'm going to take 0 times 0 is going to give me 0. I'm going to take 1 times 0 0.360 is going to give me 0 0.360. 2 times 0 0.618 <clears throat> is going to give me 1.236. <clears throat> 3 times 0.396 is going to give me 1.1. 8, 8. <clears throat> 4 times 112 is going to give me 4, 4, 8. 
<clears throat> and 5 times 15, or 0 0.015, gives me 0 0.075. So, <clears throat> let me add these up. I'm going to make sure that uh, 0 0.618 times 2. Yes, good. Okay, so I've got 0 0.360 plus 1.236 plus 1.188 plus 0.448 plus 0.075 <clears throat> gives me 3, whoops, where's my, 3.307. <clears throat> so this is mu, and this is the sum of x squared p of x. Now I can just plug that in to this equation, and that's going to be 3.307 minus mu 1.501 .01 squared. Don't forget to do the square. So minus 1.501 .01 squared <clears throat> is going to give me 1.053999. I'm going to take this since I have probabilities of three decimal places, but I have x's of only zero. I'm going to take this to... Um, two decimal places, 1.05. <clears throat> so this is the variance. <clears throat> now, to get the standard deviation, be careful. You need to take not the rounded value, but you need to take the full value, the number that's in your calculator. Take the square root of that. <clears throat> and when I take the square root of this, I get 1.026644, etc. And so I'm going to round that to two decimal places. I go to the third, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> round this to 1.03 is the standard deviation. All right. So <clears throat> that is how we calculate the mean and the standard deviation of a probability distribution. And we've covered how to test whether or not a, a uh, group of numbers and uh, what they say is a probability, if they are, in fact, a probability distribution. <clears throat> okay? So all the values, so we could do another example where we had x, <clears throat> p of x, and let's say we had 0, 1, 2, <clears throat> and we had 0 0.155, 0 um, <clears throat> 5, 4, 5, so that gives us 0 0.7, and then let's say 0 0.1. So this is between 0 and 1, this is between 0 and 1, this is between 0 and 1, but the total is equal to only 0 0.8. It's not equal to 1. So, no, <clears throat> it is not a probability distribution. And we're talking about that probability distribution here. Okay? Well, that's it for this video. I hope that uh, this has been simple and uh, beneficial for you, that you understand what we went over. Please make sure that you <clears throat> update your formula sheet. Remember that you can have definitions of symbols. You can have notes to yourself. It's your formula sheet. If you have questions, by all means, please ask me. I'm happy to help you with the course content. Please take care of yourself. Stay safe because we want to see you here next time.